EIP4844 is an upgrade that adds blob space to the Ethereum network. And it's a step, stepping stone to full sharding on Ethereum. So I designed um, a new sort of version of the Ethereum sharding protocol about uh, two years ago, which has been later named Dank sharding, that uh, basically greatly simplified the Ethereum roadmap and uh, provided a practical way of implementing uh, data sharding, which is giving data space to rollups to put their data on cheaply and that allows Ethereum to scale. Later on, we decided that we need some simpler version that we can implement more quickly together with other researchers. One of them was Proto Lambda. That's why it's named Proto Dank sharding. We came up with 4844, which is like a version that doesn't actually provide the full scaling yet, that only provides some minor improvements to scaling, but economically separates the two. Word for four, not just evolves Ethereum, it evolves the way rollups couple to Ethereum. Rollups have become like a central part of the roadmap of Ethereum. When I mentioned that there was this idea of doing a phase one, an idea of doing sharding before the merge, before proof of stake, then the sharding design looked very, very different. Sharding used to be more about execution shards, about the idea that layer one would not just serve data, but it would try and basically enshrine the idea that we now know as, as a rollup to do both data and the execution in parallel, horizontally scaled up. Now this added so much complexity and we didn't get a whole lot of benefits from this because it's very homogeneous. And so this system where there's no competition in the features that the execution layer offers and where the layer one is overloaded, this is something we escaped, something that I think is a really good call on how Ethereum should evolve. Ethereum really should try to keep the protocol minimal while allowing external teams or protocols to build on top of it and compete. Like this creates the best products for users while growing Ethereum at the same time. And so this is really what the wallop-centric roadmap is about, to have more than one kind of system as an option for the user while still increasing the, the scale. ERP4844 addresses um, one of the primary needs of uh, rollups that, that, that we as the base layer have to provide for them. So basically rollups really need from a, what we call settlement layer, they, they need both the settlement itself, so they need to have a place where they can run the ZK proofs or for optimistic rollups, a place where they can run the fraud proofs and that we already provide, that is the EVM that you can just use for that. But then you, they also need a place to store, to publish all the data. And right now they basically use Ethereum for that already, but in a somewhat hacky way where they basically we have, if you set a transaction, you can put some data to it that usually just indicates, hey, I want to go to Uniswap, I want to do this trade. And they basically just overload this field and put a lot of data in that, usually tens of tens of hundreds of times more than a normal transaction on Ethereum would, but it's very inefficient, right? It's not, not what kind of this field was supposed to be for, and so kind of like a very expensive way of publishing data. So right now, rollups are relatively expensive for, for the users. And if you look, if you dive into this, basically all of the cost for a normal user on rollup right now goes to this one specific source. And so we want to make this cheaper. And so that's what ERP4844 is, is about. It's a first step in that in that progression. Um, and so we primarily just introduce a new type of data now that is hand designed for this use case. So it's like basically, you could call it rollup data. We call it blob data, <laughs> a bit more technical term, but it's basically that. So we now we have the normal block in Ethereum and then we also we have separately have these blobs where rollups can put all the data in. And for now, we don't even do very sophisticated things with these blobs. So for now, it's really more like a preparatory step for later, more fancy technical uh, solutions. But it, it does basically make it so that they no longer have to use this kind of hacky way of publishing the data. So end users should be excited because ultimately when you're using blockchain, you want to not have to pay high gas fees. So if I want to send money, send ETH, I don't want to have to pay, you know, 50 cents, $1 to do that. With 4844, not only does that cost come down to be almost negligible, which really makes the idea of sending money or interacting with smart contract, you know, you don't have to think about the overhead of the cost, but it also enables us to think of ways to enable users to do more with their money as well, more transactions on chain. For example, Let's take a use case like gaming. You know, every time you want to 
interact with a game. Let's just take a traditional game like chess. Imagine every time you moved a chess piece and you had to, you know, spend five cents. I think a lot of people wouldn't therefore play that game. So what 4844 does for users is it enables them to interact with games in a way that is now a lot cheaper than it was previously, basically. And again, for developers, that unlocks this new paradigm, this new way to build applications that was not even possible on Ethereum.